This is what I saw. Are we here? Yes, sir. There he is. Come on, we will ride. Dude, I am so happy for you, brother. You uh -huh. are like what's right with the business. Gratitude. Dude, I, you know, uh, the Archer Brothers originally sent me a clip of you saying that you were going to let your fans invest in your project. Yeah. And I had never seen that. And I was like, wow, how cool. And then watching you do the backyard thing and then with uh, Richie Rich, who I've known for God knows 30 years, um, to see what he was doing and, and just the synergy of that and, and the respectfulness that you have for the game. So, I mean, lately I've been seeing you go off like, what got you mad tonight? Uh, <laughs> hey man, I'm not mad at all. I'm excited. I just care about the culture. I care about the Good, art. Man. I care about what I experienced as a kid and as an adult through this culture. And I care when a nigga come in my house and start shitting on the floor. Dude, speak on it, please. <laughs> like, how do you see the game right now? Like, how how is your what you're doing going to empower other artists, or how can they see you? And what you're doing clearly enough to be inspired by. I mean, I think it's hard to not be inspired. I think it's hard to not succeed with the blueprint that we laid because we shared all the infrastructure. I didn't just sell my album on even and say, hey, I made 100000 and you can't. I opened the door so everybody else could use the same shit. I didn't just sell offer-based tickets on What's TVA and say, hey, I could do it and you can. I opened the door so people could do that shit too. Everything that we do, we document and we share. It's all on YouTube or I unleash the website to where everybody could use the same tools. I'm not hiding and harboring nothing so people can't do it. If you don't do it in today's time watching what a nigga has done, you just don't want it. <laughs> Lack of infrastructure, not having it. You feel me? When you don't have some shit, it's like having kids. You know, you usually want to give your kids the shit that you didn't have. And you usually want to teach them the shit that nobody taught you. So that's what I do with the game. I'm giving all the shit that I didn't have because I figured out it's easier once I got it. It's like, oh, this is how you do it here. You feel me? Like, that's not some shit you hide and keep from people. Well, and so you can go on YouTube and watch every step. Man, every fucking thing, damn near every meeting we've had, every everything. You know, I put I put some of my marketing meetings on YouTube. When I'm meeting with the publicists and the PR team and the agents that I work with to push my music, I document that shit and I put it on YouTube. I'm not hiding no shit. It ain't no secret so magic. Literally laid out a blueprint and bread crumbs for other artists to follow in your footsteps. Follow the jelly beans, nigga. <laughs> I love it. And, and growing up, who was the most inspiring artist for you? Pop. Wow. That's crazy. And your favorite song? By Pop or just in general? Yeah, just in Pop. Sheesh. By uh, Pop. to live and die in L.A. I'm going to go with Thug's Mansion. That's pretty good. And then Toss It Up is pretty good, too. I, that, that's one that I've... I've but my but my favorite song of my favorite song of all time is probably All Falls Down by Kanye. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's What do you think of what Kanye is doing right now? And the and the touring stuff and even what he's doing direct to consumer. I think that that nigga a genius. Uh like he he knows, he, he understands humans, and he knows how to market, and when he does shows, like, Kanye is one of the first concerts I went to, like, by myself, as an adult, where it was like, oh, I'm choosing to go to this concert, I have merit in this, and it was, like, one of the greatest shows i ever seen, and it ruined concerts after that for me, because you start seeing people live, I just recently went to, you know, a famous person live, I, I go to live shows often, and I be unimpressed. And I be having to walk out. Like, I be leaving early because I, I feel... I, I can't sit and watch niggas rob the culture. And then people pay all that money to see him. And then they be like, this ain't no fucking show. You know, I put my heart into shows. <laughs> well, and, and one artist that does really well is Russ, too. How did that come along? How did I, I meet Russ? Yeah, how did that come along, that relationship? Man, Russ just posted me randomly one day. Just shared my shit. I don't even know how. I think he said he found it on TikTok. 
And he shared it, and I tapped in, and he was like, man, I love your shit. Let's build. You know, and it, some time went past, and then he kind of tapped back in and was like, I'm starting a situation, you know, what, how can I be helpful? And I told him what I needed, and he just assisted. He told me what he could do, and we locked it in, and we just start building from there. Wow. And with all of the changes with music systems and AI and stuff like that, I mean, what do you think of the whole AI thing? Um... People making music. I don't. Where do you think it's going? Do you? I don't. Do you ever use the AI for anything? Is it just Chat GPT? What do you, where Where do you think is good for artists to use AI? If I don't think it has any effect on music. Like all the niggas I know who right. get busy, AI can't fuck with us. AI can't fuck with me. You not. It, it's just different. It. My heart and my soul in it. My producers I work with, AI can't fuck with. You know, it just if you if you threaten to worry about AI, you probably need to work on your skill. What is the biggest advice that you have up for up, up and coming artists like yourself? If you could look back a year and say, "Hey, La Russell, do this," what would it be? Put that shit out. <laughs> Put that shit out relentlessly. You know, because as you know. artists, we tend to sit on hot shit. Hell yeah, bro, I get into these periods like I've gotten all the way here by putting that shit out, right? And every every few months or so, you know, I'll start having meetings again with different labels, different people, and you get in your head because you start having a, people are like, oh no, take your time because we want to pitch it here and we want to serve it to this, this, and you got to remember like, how did I get to this point? Oh, because that homegirl I had in high school, nigga, in high school, I used to go home, make a song, and put that bitch online, you know, the, the same day, very next day. And it's like, when we start making it, we start to lose that same drive and dedication and love that we had. And you can't do that. The same shit that got you here, the same shit that's going to get you there, just elevate it. So when I get back in that state, when it's like, man, fuck that, I'm in that mode, and you dropping relentlessly, because it's about, like, your passion and love, you know, I, I never, I never flood just for the sake of it, I'm not flooding music or dropping hella music to, uh, stay relevant, I don't give a fuck about that, I'm dropping shit because I love it and this shit hard and I want to share it, you feel me? But you're doing it consistently, and consistency and repetition breeds familiarity, familiarity breeds a relationship, relationship breeds teamwork or synergy, and synergy wins games, and you've caused mm -hmm. a lot of synergy, not only with social media and other artists like the rest thing, like Buster Rhymes, like Snoop Dogg, like all of your rich and your audience, I mean, inviting them to your house, I mean... How did that come about and you sold it out for a year at a time? <laughs> Break this whole shit down for me, player. Hey, man, we, we, it, it, all, it all starts with a no. You know, that's why I'm really grateful uh, for my losses as well as my wins because it all started with somebody telling me no and what I can't do and what won't happen. And um, I just took that energy and transmuted it into something that now... I own. I don't have anyone that can tell me no. I could I could wake up and throw a show any day of the week. You know, when I feel good on certain days and I'll do a rehearsal, I get paid to rehearse. You know, I'll get up and say, I'm finna rehearse at one and I put tickets up and they sell out. You feel me? Like, that's the power of having your own infrastructure. I just created well, a system where... Wait, wait, so, you brought up something really interesting. That is the power of a super fan. Now, how does that tie in with you especially? Because, for instance, I was talking to Taj Farron, who's uh, the 14-year-old kid that plays the guitar, the blues musician. He's got the number one blues album in the country right now, Australian kid. And he was telling me about this, about the super fan thing. You can have a million followers, but if you have a thousand people that are super dedicated to you... No, that's not me exercising no. the power of my super fans. I do offer-based ticketing and items. So you could be a passive fan and it's easy to support me. You don't have to be a super fan to support me at that level. I do offer-based ticketing so passive fans become super fans. So what are the levels? If a passive fan, what is the access? And then for a super fan, what would be the access? So super fans get gold cards. A gold card is, is the first ever artist membership. So if you get a gold card, you can come to any La Russell show or event for free for the rest of your life. I don't care if I'm in an arena. Like, I'm doing a show at Fairgrounds. You know, I started selling gold cards three years ago. I'm now doing a show at Fairgrounds, and people with gold cards are in there free. If I'm in an arena, they're in there free. 
You know, they, they get opportunities that don't exist for the passive fan. But as a passive fan, it's like I do offer-based ticketing. So say if I'm doing a show, you might only have $10. You know, like if you're a passive fan, you might not want to pay $80 to see a nigga. But you're willing to pay 10 because you're like, ah, that's just a meal. I'll go check them out. But once you check me out, you're never going to be a passive fan again. <laughs> and you know, that it, that's such a investment in your future. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Like, giving them a chance to invest early like that, then it will be a long-term fan forever. And that, that was that my was goal. Like that was career. literally the goal. I remember Um, I remember I was thinking of the idea because, like, LaMelo Ball and then was, like, coming into the league, and I was like, it would be really dope if I can invest in them because I've been seeing him since high school, and I was like, he's going to be tight as hell. I wish there was a way for me to monetize my fandom for him, and we created that. Dude, you are such a smart guy. You know what? I am going to come up there at some point, and I would like to sit down and interview you and just see what you do. Come on. Come to the backyard. <laughs> much love, buddy. I very much appreciate you, and I'll be contacting you soon about a pod. I love it. <laughs> thank you, brother. I appreciate your time. Gratitude. Thank you for everything you're doing for artists, and thank you for sharing what you're doing. And give out all of your social network really quick, especially the YouTube, so that people can look and follow and... Follow those breadcrumbs. You heard? We on everything. LaRusso on everything. On YouTube, we under good company. Tap in. Get some game. Get some information. Get some love. Some joy for your day. You know, it's not a lot of shit you can scroll through on the timeline and get a smile from or feel good from or, or just get something that emotionally, especially in the hip-hop space, you know, everything is a little diluted right now. So we really building something that's for the people and by the people. Full boo, nigga. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you soon, brother. Thank you for right, coming, uh, sir. I appreciate you. Gratitude. Yes, sir. Boom. Yes, sir.